Today, we're gonna make a New York Sicilian pizza. This one is the one that you're accustomed to. Obviously, if you are from New York, if you're from the tri-state area, you'll recognize this type of Sicilian. Now, we already made the grandma pizza. We did four separate episodes on the grandma. Like I said, in that episode, the dough is the same for all of these recipes. I'm gonna make it now just simply because it's a larger ball. So we'll start it at this point. I'll show you the exact measurements. If you have a scale, I really recommend you use it because if you don't have a scale, you're not gonna have accurate results. This one was $15 at Costco, and the other one I have uh, was $8 at Amazon. Here is flour, and this is 497 grams of flour or four cups of flour. I recommend you get a bunch of these because this will help you a lot. So I'm gonna zero this out. It's the same weight as this one. So 502, so they're off by a couple grams these, but 502, 497 is close enough. I'm using SAF instant yeast, and I really, I really like this yeast. If you're using this, you don't, you can just put it straight in cold water, and that's why I like it. It's just easier to use. So it's for two grams of yeast, a little less than a teaspoon. You can just put it straight in the flour here because it's instant yeast. Sugar is gonna be six grams. This is already weighed out or one and a half teaspoons of sugar. This is just regular granulated sugar. This is 10 grams of table salt or one and three quarter teaspoon. And just give this all just a little bit of a mix, just, just gently. We're gonna mix it again with the water. Okay, and it's 11 and a quarter ounces of water or 318 grams. I actually had somebody ask me about this, Tom Lockhart. He's right, He's I should have just kept, because I, was, I had everything in grams. I shouldn't have just went back to water for ounces. So you got your scale out, you might as well get it exact. Okay, and that's 318 grams of water. It's cold water, doesn't have to be warm water. Since we're gonna do what's called a cold ferment on this dough, we don't need it to rise quickly. It's gonna get a better taste. It's gonna be more flavorful. It's gonna have that New York pizza taste. Pretty much, I, I would say, go for a 48 hour cold ferment, even 72 hours uh, tastes even better. All right, and then just mix all the flour into the water. Then put in one and a quarter tablespoons of olive oil. And save your olive oil because you're gonna need it again for when we store the dough ball. Then you can take that sh shaggy mass of dough and put it right on a cutting board. Try to get everything out so you have the exact weight. You know, normally when you make bread, you can use flour at this point to help you knead it but you really don't want to add flour here because you want to have a universal dough weight. You don't need to knead very much. And what's going to happen, it's going to get a little sticky as you do it. If you can't do it anymore, if it gets too sticky, then just throw a lid, a bowl lid right on top of it. Leave it there for 30 minutes. When it's covered, it will warm up a little bit. It'll it'll get a little bit easier for you to form a ball. You don't have to go crazy with this. You could, you could literally just take it and put it in this container or any container like this. It's just a pizza container. It's, they work really well. So just coat the bottom. It's still sticky. Just form it into a rough ball. Okay, and then just tuck in it under. Tiny bit more oil on top. A piece of plastic for to really seal it in there. I would write on this and write the date, maybe put a piece of tape, that's what I normally do. But put this in the fridge right now, bring it out when you're ready to continue uh, with the rest of this video. So I've had this dough cold fermenting in the fridge for 72 hours. So this is gonna be a great pizza. This is a 14 by 14 Sicilian pan. This is made by the company Lloyd's Pan, same brand that we made the grandma pizza with. I had a 16 by 12. The difference between this one, not just that it's a square, is that it has one and a half inch sides. A Sicilian typically is, is a deeper pizza. Besides this being higher, the other thing that's different than the grandma is grandma uses a ton of oil in there. We don't, we're not gonna use as much oil on, the, on this right here, but we do wanna put some oil on the bottom.
There's other differences too. We're gonna par bake this. Now I know some places do it all at once. What I've been able to get a good one, it's, it, it involves par baking. And I know a lot of places do par bake it. This dough's been out of the fridge for about an hour. Definitely take your dough out for 60 minutes prior to doing this. You could take it out even longer. Now I know again, it looks like there's nowhere near enough dough here, right? Especially you're looking at it now and you're like, how is that gonna turn into a Sicilian? It's not even filling the pan. Time is going to make it rise. Let's cover this with plastic and then we're gonna wait about 30 minutes to even 40 minutes before we return to it again and stretch it to the uh, final size of the pan. So I'll put this off to the side. All right, let's take care of the tomatoes and the cheese, mozzarella cheese, while, while we're waiting for the ability to stretch it further. This polio is extremely wet. Look at this, I can like squeeze it. Scalbani is much, much harder. Depending on which one you use, and you might be using a completely different brand, this polio is, is very hard to shred or anything unless you freeze it. So I recommend at least 45 minutes. You don't have to freeze it to, to a solid brick, but do that so you can work with it. The Galbani, you can do it right out of the package. So I like to use it on kind of a bigger setting, but you can do it any, anything you want. You get kind of something like this. You can use San Marzano tomatoes like these. Uh, just if you do, blender pulse them for about a second. I like this brand. I've showed you guys this in the past. So I'm gonna go with these. These are good tomatoes to make pizza with. So, and they're fairly thick already. So you don't really have to do much draining or anything like that. And this isn't the same type of sauce that we used for the regular grandma pie. This is gonna be a little different. See how thick these are already? That's pretty good consistency. You really don't want anything too on, on too much on the wet side. And then all we need for this is about a half a teaspoon to one teaspoon of kosher salt. All right, let's put these off to the side and then continue with the dough. Save your plastic because you're gonna need it again. So let's try to stretch it out now. Dough is gonna be a lot more pliable now. See that? You can almost just take it and put it into place. So instead of like trying to like press it and trying to overwork it when it's cold, you just wait. Now we can get it into the corners and we can build we can build up a crust if we want, which which I'm, I intend to do and I think you should do the same. Normally a grandma doesn't have like a crust and a Sicilian does. All right, that looks pretty good, but look at how flat it is, right? It needs, it needs to rise. So let's get the sauce on here. We're gonna put a little bit of sauce, only about six ounces just enough, we'll work it in with our hands right now. Remember our hands are already touching the dough. Then we're gonna put our plastic back on and we're gonna put it on our oven deck for two hours, maybe even three hours. We're gonna let it rise. And that's essentially one of the tricks how you get that really thick Sicilian pizza dough. All right, just a little bit of the tomato. Okay, and then put that plastic right back on. And for two hours, let it rise. Put it right on top of the oven. So it's been two hours and it rose so much, like tremendously. Look at this. I don't know if you can really appreciate how much it rose, but let me see if I can show you. It probably went up about triple. So we're going to put this in the oven and we're gonna do a par bake. So a lot of pizzerias do a par bake. Some of them don't. We have a little bit of sauce on here and this is exactly what we want. We'll kind of protect the dough while it cooks. And we're gonna cook this at 440 to 450 degrees. The exact temperature, you might have to do one or two of these, maybe maybe two or three of these before you get it exactly perfect. If you're using a convection oven, I would cook it at 425 degrees. We're gonna cook it, par bake this for 12 minutes right now. All right, so that looks pretty good. You're gonna need about 12 to 16 ounces, about what we graded. Mm -hmm. 
And just try to hit like a little bit everywhere. That looks good. And then the sauce. I'm gonna do diagonal lines. And there it is. We're gonna get this back in the oven for about 10 minutes. And then we'll check on it and we'll add a little bit of pecorino and oregano. All right, that looks pretty good right there, but it's a little wet. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, Pecorino Romano cheese. That'll dry up a little bit of the wetness. It'll suck, kind of suck it up. And, and it's really good, I love it. Probably a couple tablespoons worth. And then right here, some Sicilian oregano. So if you're a little wet right here and check your bottom, if it's not that brown, Feel free to broil this for about a minute, maybe two, but you gotta you gotta keep an eye on it 100% of the time. I'm gonna do that right now. I always find for my oven, thick Sicilian pie normally takes about 25 minutes at 450, give or take. Let's get this in the oven for like one more minute and make sure you're watching the whole time. All right, now that looks absolutely perfect. I'm gonna turn off my timer. Look at the color on that and everything. We gotta cut this up. We gotta make sure we got the crunch. The crunch is what it's all about. We gotta make sure we got the crunch. We gotta make sure the crumb is correct. Do a little side shot right now. Make sure it's perfect. This might be the best Sicilian I've ever made. This is so good. And you know, for you, for you New Yorkers, which I know the majority of you are from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, who watch me. And that doesn't mean I don't love all of you other people who are watching me, but you guys know what a Sicilian looks like. And I'm not I'm not talking about a Sicilian from Sicily. I'm talking about a Sicilian from New York. Anyway, the real test of this, if it's good, is if our bottom is really crisp without being burnt and that we get a good crunch when we put our roller through it. So let's see how we do. Yep, and you can hear that. Hear that? This is gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. So here we go. And that looks absolutely perfect to me. But this is exactly what I want in a New York Sicilian. Oh, that crunch. I'm gonna do a couple more like this. Communicate to me, tell me what you want. As long as it stays within the Italian niche and specifically the Italian American niche from New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Watch more videos, that helps me out even more than the subscription. Thanks for getting through to the end. I'll see you next time.